All right, I guess we'll get going. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Robert Schweikert. I'm a distinguished engineer at SUSE, focused on the public cloud. Unfortunately, Ron uh, is not feeling well. He's the product manager for public cloud, and so you get to listen to me doing both parts of the talk, uh, speaking about product management stuff and a little bit of engineering things. And with that, let's get going. Uh, so today, what are we going to cover? We're going to talk about the, off the offers of products that SUSE has in the public cloud providers. We'll talk about images, image types or flavors, and application offerings and how to find them in the various cloud providers, because that is not necessarily as easy as one would hope. Um, we'll talk about upcoming products and um, product updates to existing listings new offerings um, that we're working on on the engineering side that we're hoping um, to get out uh, later this year. And then we'll talk a little bit about LTSS, which is especially interesting for a number of customers because SUSE Linux Enterprise 12 series, the life cycle is coming to an end. SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 15 SP5 and SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP applications SP5 are reaching the end of general support on October 31st of this year. And so LTSS is becoming very interesting to um, a number of customers in the public cloud. So we'll talk about how that, how we're going to envision that. That solution is still under development. So a few things that I'm saying here might change, but um, the general concepts will, will remain the same. Um, so let's start. Uh, talk about image types, image flavors for uh, our operating system images. So that is SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server for SAP, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro, and uh, also SLE HPC, SUSE Linux Enterprise HPC, which is a product um, up until 15 SP5 and in SLE 15 SP6, it will become a module again, like it was in SLE 12. Um, so first of all, we have a pay-as-you-go images. So those are, if you start instances from those images, you get built by the hour by the cloud provider, either Amazon, Google, or Microsoft. They run by the hour. Uh, you know, they're good for bursty workloads uh, or workloads that have a well-defined use of operation if you turn them off overnight. If you run a workload 24-7, um, pay-as-you-go will be more expensive than if you're going with a bring-your-own subscription model, right? Um, pay-as-you-go gets supported by the cloud service provider for level one and level two, and then we provide, SUSE provides level three support to the cloud service provider. So you get your support if you're using pay-as-you-go, you would call Amazon support and they will help you. And if, if they determine that it's something that only SUSE can fix, then they call us and then we work with Amazon and then they are, your, they are the front end for support for you. If you have bring us your own subscription, that means you use your existing registration keys that you have for SUSE Customer Center. You start an, Im an instance from one of those images, you register it with SEC, you can also register it with the SUSE update infrastructure. And what the SUSE update infrastructure is, I'll talk about that later in the presentation. On-demand images, you do not have a registration key for SEC, so you need to get updates in a different way, and that's what the uh, update infrastructure does in the public cloud. And on-demand instances will register themselves automatically to the update infrastructure. So the minute you log in, you have repositories and you can run super up or install any packages that, that are in the repositories that are part of the product that you're launching. So those are the primary uh, differences. And with the bring your own subscriptions, you can use uh, SUSE add-on features at the moment, LTSS, for example, or kernel live patching. Um, and again, LTSS we plan to support for pay-as-you-go, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but at the moment, add-on features are only available for BYOS instances. So that, again, that would be live patching, for example. 
Okay, um, then applications, so um, Rancher, Manager, New Vector, um, these are the Kubernetes applications, and then SUSE Manager is a VM-based application. Pay-as-you-go offers for these are available in the marketplaces. Um, SUSE Manager is not available in Google because they do not offer the features that we need to make that product available, available through their marketplace. So pay-as-you-go pay SUSE Manager is only available in AWS and, and in Azure. Uh, Google are working on the features that we need to make that work, and then when they're implemented on the framework, we'll bring SUSE Manager to Google as well as pay-as-you-go. These are metered applications. That means the application itself is free of charge, and you get metered for the nodes that you manage. So we count the systems that are enrolled in SUSE Manager, and then you we meter you for those, and you get billed once a month for the, for the systems that are being managed. Um, for SUSE Manager, we count the maximum numbers of systems that you had connected in, in any given month, and again, you get billed on a monthly basis. For Rancher and New Vector, we bill on an average, right? Because the containers go up and down, clusters go up and down, and so we, we average the managed resources over a month, and then that's what you get billed for. For New Vector, there's also a volume discount. So New Vector, you can set up that, uh, that there is a so-called master instance, and then if you have other New Vector um, setups in other clusters, you can connect all those, and then we bill through the to the primary instance where, and through the primary cluster where new vector is running. That way, you manage more resources, more clusters, and then you get a volume discount. Uh, that volume discount is not available for Rancher. If you need, uh, if you are interested in having volume discount for Rancher, talk to us. We can get a private offer, and then you can also get the volume discount. But if you're just doing pay-as-you-go, you cannot get the volume discount for Rancher at the moment. Okay, image listings. So these are um, our products across the top. You can see the applications. New vector here on the right, Rancher, SUSE Linux Micro, uh, SUSE Manager is not on here. So that's for SAP, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. In AWS, SLEED 12 and SLEED 15, again, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 12 SP5 is reaching the end of its life, October 31st of this year. These are available uh, hourly and annual, and um, pretty much in all frameworks, right? Um, and then, uh, so AWS, and then in Azure, and in Google, and then again, you, each of these is a flavor of BYOS and, and pay-as-you-go, right? So the hourly would be the pay-as-you-go offering, and when you see annual here, that would be the BYOS, right? Because if you get a, an entitlement from SUSE to use with a BA, BYOS instance, then that is a yearly transaction. Uh, AWS um, also offers uh, committed use discounts, right? If you buy, like, if you get a reserved instance, then you get a discount, which is also cheaper than the hourly price, right? So if you're looking at moving something into production that you know the whole will be running 24-7, reserved instances is a good way, uh, private offers, which is basically BYOS, uh, private offers get transacted through the, through the cloud service provider, so in AWS, for example, and then you can uh, take advantage if you have a committed spend agreement with Amazon, then that counts against that committed spend, right? Uh, similar in Azure and in Google, there is uh, a discount. The more you use, you get a discount automatically, right? So, so it works a little differently. Similar for slash for SAP and similar for SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro. Um, and then Rancher, again, uh, these are monthly, 
Rancher, New Vector, and Sousa Manager, which fell off the chart here, sorry about that. So these are monthly, which would be the pay-as-you-go offers, and then the annual, those are the BYOS offers, right, when you have a contract directly with Sousa. Uh, and again, the monthly metering is um, based on note counts, right, for both Rancher and, and New Vector. And Google does not have these at the moment. Uh, again, this is uh, infrastructure related, but we're expecting Rancher and New Vector to come to Google on a monthly basis sometime this year. All right, uh, some more about the application listings. Um, so the applications are different in, well, Rancher Manager and New Vector are container listings and they're coming through the container marketplaces so that your user experience is different, right? So for example, in AWS, if you get a marketplace listing for a container product, you will be presented with the Helm command. Helm install, yada, 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 right? Um, that is the common way to act, interact with your cluster, and so that's what AWS ended implementing. Um, you cannot convert a, so if you have a, let's say you have a Kubernetes control plane running and you installed Rancher, and you wanna go to a pay-as-you-go model, you cannot convert that running cluster, you have to start from scratch. So you have to set an, up another AK, uh, EKS cluster, then go to the marketplace, subscribe to the listing, and then use that Helm chart to deploy Ranger into that new cluster. Then, of course, you can enroll all the downstream nodes that you're managing with, with, with Rancher uh, server and just shut down the other instance of the, of the control plane, right? And the same is true for New Vector. Um, again, all three applications uh, count the connected nodes, right? Um, and that is what we're reporting, and that will then show up on your bill with the, with the CSP. All right, so how does that metering work, right? So there is a, a marketplace, a billing API that, we, that the service providers use, and inside of your cluster, as part of Rancher Manager, there is a container in a control plane that connects to that billing API. And we connect to another container that's running as part of Ranger Manager, and we ask it on a periodic basis on how many nodes are being managed. Then at the end of the month, that gets tallied up and averaged based on the count, and then that is what we're reporting to the Marketplace Billing API, and that's what shows up on your bill. Coming soon, like within the next four weeks, these applications will include a free trial. So you get to run 30 days for free, and then the billing cycle will kick in the next month, right? Uh, so we just finished that uh, implementation. It's currently in testing. Uh, we're through testing on Azure. AWS testing is ongoing. Within the next month or so, we expect this to be published. So they'll have free trials. Um, if you're starting today, you don't have it yet. So uh, if you want to kick the tires, wait a month, and then you get 30, months, uh, 30 days for free for kicking the tires. Yep. And with Rancher Manager, as I mentioned already, I think you can also ma you manage downstream clusters, and it doesn't really matter where they run, right? They can run in EKS, AKS, any other Kubernetes. They can run in your data center on RKE2. They can run in the cloud on RKE2. They can run on K3S, right? What we're getting is the number of nodes that are running in each cluster, and that's what we're ultimately reporting, right? So Rancher Manager, which runs in its own control plane, and right, this is important to remember, Rancher Manager has its own control plane, New Vector runs in your cluster, in, in, in the cluster that you're monitoring. So that's a, that's a big, uh, that's an important difference to remember. 
And whenever you enroll one of those Kubernetes clusters into Ranger Manager, then they start reporting the nodes, and then that's what we're sending to the CSP billing. Right. Again, node vector is different, right? We count the nodes. But new vector runs in your cluster. It doesn't have its own control plane, right? So if you already have a cluster where you're running containers, you deploy no vector into that cluster, right? When you want to deploy Ranger Manager, you need to create your, a new Kubernetes cluster, right? Because it needs its own control plane. And then, as I said, there's one, you can set it up, you can set no vector up such that there is one master and then everything gets reported through that master and you get the volume discounts. Similar picture then to Rancher. Um, right? And again, we, we report the number of nodes that are running in the cluster and then that, that is getting built. Um, if you have multiple departments, you don't have to have a master. You can have that cluster also report to the billing to the billing API if they're running in a different account, for example, right? So you do not have to have a master uh, new vector controller. So then there is the private offers. As I mentioned, uh, you can always come talk to us if any of these setups don't work for you or if you don't want to go pay as you go but you still want to use uh, your committed spend with a cloud provider, you can come talk to us. We make a contract that then gets tra uh, transacted through the cloud provider, AWS or Microsoft. So you still get that applies to your um, committed spend with, the, with Amazon, for example. It then works like a BYOS uh, image or, or instance because you will get product entitlement keys from us, right? And then once it goes through the private offer, you also get L1, L2, and L3 support from SUSE, no longer from the cloud provider, right? So this is a transaction mechanism to help you with your committed spend with the cloud provider, but at the same time, it's like deal working with SUSE directly on, on getting your registration keys. And again, it, it works then like a data center install, right? Once, but it is transacted through the cloud provider, and again, it helps with the committed spend. So, uh, yeah, where are we today? What do we have? What is relatively recent? Liberty 7 rolled out. Liberty 7, 8, and 9 rolled out in uh, Google and Amazon. We're still working on Azure. That was in April. We are rolling out. Uh, Micro 6, which had a delay of the product release, and then we had some all other, other issues because uh, the way we're building the product has changed. We're, as I mentioned, we're still working on Liberty 7, 8, and 9 for uh, Azure, um, hopefully coming in July. In the next three to four weeks, we'll have the free trial period for Rancher New Vector. The free trial period for Suma images has already gone out, so that's already available. Um, and then we're going to look at SLE Micro, Pay as You Go, AWS Azure, and BYOS, AWS Azure. So some of the SLE Micro stuff is already out. Uh, as I say, we're working through some last minute things that have popped up. And we're also working on some improvements with the user experience in, in Azure using templates. Um, that project has been delayed in favor of some other higher priority items, and, uh, but we still expect that to get out, get that out this year. We're also working on having New Vector as an EKS console add-on. Um, we're working very closely with AWS to remove the hurdles that, that are there to make that happen. So uh, AWS has certain requirements to enable an application to be an EKS add-on in a console. We're working through those requirements. Unfortunately, that is a serial process, so we can't exactly determine when that is going to happen. 
but we're working on that project. Uh, then in July, we have SUSE Manager 5.0, which is going to come to AWS Azure as pay-as-you-go and BYOS and to Google as a BYOS only. SUSE Manager 5.0 is a container-based application, so SUSE Manager switches from a traditional install to a container base. Um, that meant we had to do a lot of work on the back-end update infrastructure, as and as, as I mentioned, I'll talk about what that is, what the update infrastructure is in, in a little while, towards the end of the presentation. And as I mentioned, the SUMA 30-day free trial is actually already released. Um, and then we're working on LTSS support for pay as you go, and I'll talk in some more detail about that. And then some, well, the beta program for SUSE Linux Enterprise 16 is going to ramp up towards the end of the year. If you want to participate in that, you will need to start a SLE 15 instance and then migrate, but we don't necessarily know exactly what that migration looks like today because there are very big differences between SLE 15 and SLE 16. Uh, but uh, SLE 16 is coming and uh, there'll be images uh, once we release. And yeah, as I mentioned in 25, that's coming. So, what does the 30-day free trial look like? I already mentioned that. It's for New Vector, Reinsurance, who's a manager. It's basically no billing for the first month. You can stand it up. You can kick the tires, see if you like it. In the free trial period, there's, of course, also no support. So you're, so you're on your own, uh, reading the documentation and, and whatever. And then if you just leave the cluster running, in case of you know, New Vector and Rancher, you will get billed the next month automatically. There's nothing you need to do. And the same is true for SUSE Manager. If you start a SUSE Manager pay-as-you-go instance, you enroll some uh, machines to see if you like the management interface and you like the way systems you know, get managed and you see that you know, the heterogeneous environment that SUSE Manager can do, I mean, it will manage RHEL and Canonical and Debian, all kinds of distributions, and you can all do you can do that through SUSE Manager. And if you like that, and you want to just leave the pay as you go instance running, just leave it running, and you'll just get built the next month. And the first 30 days will be free, right? And as I said, that's already been released uh, for SUSE Manager, and New Vector and Ranger is coming within the next four weeks. So now let's talk about LTSS. Okay, LTSS is long-term service pack support. That means basically when a distribution reaches the end of general support and you're not ready to upgrade that instance to the next version, then LTSS becomes interesting, right? So generally, um, and a distribution that is in LTSS, we consider to be in an inactive state, and that means the images only get refreshed if there is a critical security update. Other than that, the images stay the same. If you do not have LTSS, you can't get these updates, right? So that means when we do, when there is a critical security update and you're running an instance that's, let's say, on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 15 SP2, which is currently still in LTSS, although that's running out at the end of this year, I think. So let's use 15 SP3 as an example, then, which is in LTSS, then you would not get any updates, right, unless you have LTSS, which currently is a little difficult if you're having um, pay-as-you-go. But we do really, if there is a critical security update, we will refresh those images. So that means you can start a new instance and move your workload over and deal with all of that, right? So this is where LTSS is really helpful. Then you get access to the updates. And um, that keeps your systems running, right? And this is really the image lifecycle here. Um, active images are the current distribution. So at the moment, that is still slash 12 SP5 and it is less 15 SP5, 
and in July it will become SLES 15 SP6, right? And then next year we will have SLES 15 SP7, which will be the last service pack on the SLE 15 series, right? And then in 25 we'll also have uh, SLE 16. So for active images, they get refreshed every three months automatically. Um, a refreshed image means it will have all the packages and bug fixes that happened since the last time the image was released, right? Uh, and all of those are, of course, also available in the repositories, right? These are, new, these are the current distributions. These are also the distributions where we do uh, enablement. So when the public cloud providers create a new instance type, um, many times there is, it's like hardware enablement basically, enablement ne needed, and that only happens on the active distributions, if it is possible at all. So some things we can't do, like there's a new instance type in Google. Um, we have terrible performance with SLES 12. We can't fix it. It's, it's totally out of scope. Uh, they would be way too intrusive in the kernel and the product is reaching the end of its general support. So that was a no can do, sorry. Customers that need that instance type will need to run on SLES 15, right? Uh, so then inactive images, again, they get refreshed for critical security updates only. So that is CV, CVSS score nine and higher. Think Spectre, Shellshock, Heartbleed. So all the ones that you've heard about in the last four or five years, uh, those are the critical ones, right? And then deprecated, images get deprecated six months before the life cycle, and a deleted image has been removed. So now why do you need to know those four terms? Because um, we actually tell you this information with a tool called Pint. And um, this is also published in the documentation, right? So um, service packs, active, again, 15, 12 and 15 SP5 at the moment. If the images get refreshed, the previous image gets to deprecate it immediately, right? If it's just a regular refresh, and then the old image is no longer maintained. It just gets deprecated, and then six months later, it gets deleted. This is automated. There's no interference, no human interference. It just happens, right? Uh, for BYOS images, um, when there's a new distribution, it goes from active to inactive. And then for less for SAP, also when there's a new distribution, it goes from active to inactive. Um, yeah. And then again, critical security issues, CVS, S9 and higher trigger automatic refresh for active and inactive images, and the replaced images become deprecated, right? So, uh, LTSS repository support. So the idea is that we will provide LTSS repositories through the update infrastructure, okay? And again, I'll talk about the update infrastructure at the end. Um, today, if you want LTSS for a pay as you go instance, you end up having to get SUSE manager, you have to talk to SUSE, you have to get special contracts. It is a rather cumbersome process. We have two gentlemen here sitting in the middle of the room. They've dealt with that process on the operational side and they can tell you how ugly that is, not just for you, but also for on the SUSE side. So the idea is to make this easier, not require SUSE manager, and just allow you to add uh, LTSS to your pay-as-you-go instances. It will still require a direct contract with SUSE in order to get LTSS. That's not because we want to be in the middle of this. This is simply because the public cloud providers don't provide the infrastructure that we would need to make LTSS addition a self-service program, right? But you come talk to us and say, I want LTSS for, let's say, SLES 12 SP5, because that's gonna come up here in, in October. 
that can get transacted through a private offer in the cloud provider. Again, it goes to your committed spend, right? You will get a registration code from us, and then you will be able to use the register cloud guest command in some way, shape, or form. What the arguments here will be is to be decided. As I said, this is under active development. And you run that on your uh, pay-as-you-go instance, and then we will verify the registration code that, that you give us with the SUSE Customer Center, and then we will add the LTSS repositories to your instance automatically. Right? LTSS repositories are stream-specific. So when you get, for example, the uh, LTSS for 15SP3, that does not carry over to 15SP4. Right? So they are this is service pack specific. And, and then if you go and you get LTSS for 15SP3 and then upgrade to 15SP4 any time, your 15SP3 LTSS repositories stay on your system, but they're not really useful anymore, right? Because you've upgraded your whole system to 15SP4. Uh, and again, it goes through the cloud provider, AWS or Google, but you're dealing directly with um, AWS. And this is a, uh, uh, directly with SUSE. It's, it's a direct contract with SUSE. But it can get transacted through AWS and or Google. You can also use it in Azure, but you can't transact it in, in Azure, right? So you can get the same feature in Azure with LTSS add-on, but you can't buy it through Azure because they don't want to work that way. All right, so here's the workflow for LTSS enablement on pay-as-you-go instances. Um, there's a contract, right? So for Google and AWS, there's a marketplace listing. You can that, that can be used to transact. It goes to your committed spend discount. For Microsoft, you would just contact SUSE directly. Then there will be a contract. You will get product entitlements. You will use those with the register cloud guest command. And then that connects you to the SUSE update infrastructure. You automatically get the LTSS repositories. And when there are updates in the LTSS stream, you run super up and you get the updates and everything is just fine. All right, a few miscellaneous things to keep in mind um, before I get to a few words about the update infrastructure. So new instance types, I already mentioned that. Generally, that only happens for active distributions. Um, and sometimes that's not possible either, right? So just, just keep that in mind. We always wear, work very closely when, with the cloud providers when do instance types come, come about. And uh, we try to make sure that everything works before those go GA. And, and again, sometimes features cannot be backported. Uh, when new regions come about, the update infrastructure gets enabled in those regions as soon as possible. Um, again, it requires collaboration between the cloud service provider and SUSE. Um, access to the update infrastructure requires access to the instance metadata server in all three providers, although Google and um, Amazon allow you to turn access to the instance metadata service off, and you can turn that off. You just can't connect to the update infrastructure then. And access to the update infrastructure also requires internet access from the instance. It doesn't have to go through the cloud provider. So if you have a VPC that you don't want to go out to the internet and you have some routing that goes through your firewall in your corporate data center, that is perfectly fine, right? But we need internet access from the instance in order for you to use pay-as-you-go. You don't have to, do, have to have that if you're using BYOS. Okay. Um, requests for features go through the CSP, uh, or if you're using BYOS, go through your regular SUSE sales contract. Um, and then if you're using BYOS, you have an SCC account, 
that's where you would file your support requests anyway, right? So then that's all the same. Live demo. Okay, so now I said update infrastructure about 20 times in this talk. And so let's say what that is. The update infrastructure is basically there to solve one problem. And that is in the data center world, there's a salesperson and there's you as the customer. And you guys get together and there's some negotiation about a contract. And then after all the deal is signed, SUSE sends you out some magic numbers. And then when you install SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, you type in those magic numbers and then you get connected to the SUSE Customer Center. Pay-as-you-go doesn't work that way. We have no way to send you magic numbers. So we needed some other way to deal with that. And the other way to deal with this is to get information from the instance metadata service, which I just mentioned, which is why we need that, right? And so basically the update infrastructure is a collection of servers, two types of servers. One set of servers are called the region servers. And these are distributed through the cloud framework. There are four or five of those in, in each provider. And the other servers that, we are, that are part of the update infrastructure are the update servers. And there are generally three per region. And if you count up all the regions in Google, Azure, and AWS, um, then all of this makes about 320 servers that we're running these days. The update infrastructure is run and operated by SUSE. We have a dedicated team for that. They're monitored 24-7 uh, with alarm, but everything is set up in high availability. So even if any one of those goes out, there's no problem, right? And then in any given region, you start up an instance. So this is now in your VPC. Make that green. So this is your domain. So what happens then at first is that this instance, the image has some magic built in and it knows how to find the region servers. It connects to the region servers and says, hey, I'm here. Tell me where I should register myself. And the region server is basically nothing but a map that says region X has these three servers locally. And so it sends back that information. And then once this instance knows what to connect to, it will reach out to the update servers, send the instance metadata along, which then gets verified here and then the re repositories are sent back. And all of this replaces the magic code that you get when you have a connection to SCC. And again, these are region local, so that means no network charges, and it is extremely fast, right? Because everything is in the same region, it runs on the same network uh, as the cloud provider. You can also take advantage of this region local update infrastructure if you're running BYOS instances. This is not just for pay-as-you-go. So sometime last year, we introduced the support that you can connect this instance with your BYOS registration code to the update infrastructure. What happens then is you send the registration code along with the instance metadata to the update infrastructure. The update servers go back to SCC and say, here, a customer gave me this registration code. Is this valid for this product? SEC says yes. We give you the repositories, and then you're connected to the, um, to the local update server. You are always connected in a one-on-one -on -one connection. Should that one go down that you're connected with, the client knows how to find the next one or the next one. But it always stays in that region, right? So the HA is implemented on the client, and there are always at least three of these. And so that's how that works in, 
in general. Thank you for your attention. Have a great day. And thank you.